Today's story is The Frog Prince. Based on the story by the Brothers Grimm, illustrated by Mike Gordon. So this is a fairy tale. And in another video I did, I talked about what a fairy tale is. This story is definitely make-believe, but have fun as you find out what happens in The Frog Prince, retold by Susanna Davidson. This is a chapter book, and good readers love to find out more about what's going to happen in the story. So, chapter one is called Princess in Trouble. Chapter two is Poppy's Promise. Chapter three, Frog to the Rescue. Chapter four, Into the Palace. And chapter five, The Frog Prince. All right, are you ready? Let's go. Chapter one, Princess in Trouble. Princess Poppy was furious. I won't marry him, Daddy, she said. He's smelly and smug and slimier than a frog. You don't have to marry Prince Humperdinck now, darling, said her mother. You can wait until you're grown up. I never want to marry him, said Poppy. I'd rather eat my toenails. Poppy, shouted her father, don't be so rude. You've been pampered by your mother, spoiled by your sisters. It's time you did as I say. Don't be mean to Poppy, Papa, cried her sisters. And Humperdinck has such big teeth, wailed Poppy. It's because I'm the youngest, Poppy went on sadly. My sisters got all the best princes. I hate being the youngest. That's enough, said the king. Prince Humperdinck is coming to dinner tonight and you must be polite to him. He is your future husband, after all. I'll find another prince to marry, Poppy declared. You can have until tomorrow morning, said the king. But you'll never find a prince in that time. Just you wait, said Poppy. She picked up her golden ball and stomped into the garden. Chapter 2, Poppy's Promise Princess Poppy ran down the path to the palace pond, throwing and catching her ball as she went. There must be another prince somewhere, she thought. Anyone would be better than Humperdinck. Poppy was so cross, she didn't see the wobbly stone. She wibbled. Ooh! She wobbled. She slipped and fell, splat, face first into the pond. Her beautiful golden ball flew out of her hands. With a loud splash, it disappeared into the deep, dark pond. I hope it doesn't land on me. Oh, no! Poppy groaned. My birthday present from Daddy! I'm in big trouble now, she thought. Poppy looked down into the pond, hoping to see her ball. Instead, she came face to face with a pair of big, bulging eyes. Ugh, she cried. A frog! The frog cleared his throat. <coughs> Princess Poppy, he croaked, let me help you. I am at your service. Poppy stared in surprise. I've never met a talking frog before, she said. Still, I don't see how you could help me. I could fetch your ball for you, said the frog. Oh, said Poppy. Thank you. I suppose you might be useful after all. But you must promise me something first. He added. Anything, anything, agreed Poppy. Promise that you'll let me live in your palace. I want to eat from your plate, drink from your glass, and sleep on your silken pillow. Yuck! 
In your dreams, thought Poppy, but out loud she said, I promise. Chapter Three Frog to the Rescue. The frog pushed down on his feet, leaped up with his legs, and plunged into the pond. Princess Poppy waited. Suddenly, in the deep blue water, she saw a glimmer of gold. Ta da! The frog rose out of the pond. Above his head, he held the golden ball. Hooray! shouted Poppy. She snatched up the ball and raced back to the palace. Hey! the frog called after her. What about your promise? But Poppy was already too far away to hear. The frog hopped as fast as he could, but he couldn't catch up with Poppy. Wait for me! Chapter Four: Into the Palace. Poppy arrived back just in time to change for dinner. Hurry up, Poppy! I'm coming. Oh, I think I see Prince Humperdinck. Do you see him? She had to sit next to Prince Humperdinck, who smelled of cabbage. Greetings, Princess Puppy. Just then, there was a faint tapping sound. Is someone at the door? Asked the Queen. Who do you think might be at the door? Poppy had a sinking feeling. She rushed to the door, opened it, and peered outside. Hello. Said the frog, Poppy slammed the door in his face. Who was that? Said the king. No one. Poppy said quickly. That's funny. Said Prince Humperdinck. I was sure I heard someone. Shh. The tapping noise came again. Poppy, I really do think someone's there. Said the queen. I'll ask the footman to look. Said the king. No, Daddy, don't! cried Poppy. It's only a frog. <gasps> How horrible! He rescued my golden ball from the pond. Poppy added, and I sort of said he could stay with me. Then you must keep your word," bellowed the king. "Let the frog in." I'd really rather you didn't. Oh, Daddy, I can't," said Poppy. "He's so wet and warty." Poppy," said her father furiously. "Let that frog in right now." Poppy dragged her feet to the door, praying that the frog had gone. But as soon as she opened the door, the frog shot inside. Boing, boing, boing! He followed Poppy all the way back to her chair. She could hear his wet feet going splat, splat, splat on the floor behind her. Poor you! He's the slimiest frog I've ever seen. I thought I'd never make it. Oh dear," said Prince Humperdinck. Suddenly, I'm not very hungry. I think I might be allergic to frogs. Excuse me," said the frog. "But Princess Poppy did promise that I could eat from her plate. May I sit at the table too?" "Certainly not," snapped Poppy crossly. "Don't be so rude," said the king. "The frog is our guest." "I'm starving," said the frog. "What's the first course?" Cold water cress soup," said the king, smiling at him. "Help yourself." This is the life. The frog dived into Poppy's bowl. "This is delicious!" he cried between mouthfuls. "I don't think I'm hungry any more," said Poppy, as the frog slurped up the last of her soup. "I think I'm going to be sick." Right. Said the frog cheerfully, "What's next?" Poppy sighed miserably. "What is the second course?" 
she asked a maid. Um, eh, the maid began nervously. Come on, said the king. You must know what's for supper. Well, you see, your highness, the maid went on. Cook didn't know about our extra guest. I'm afraid it's frog's legs. The frog gulped. I think I might skip this course. He said weakly, "Poppy didn't usually like frogs' legs, but that night she had seconds. You must be full now, <coughs> isn't it? Time for bed, princess," said the frog. <coughs> "Oh no!" cried Poppy. "You're not coming anywhere near my bedroom." "But you promised," said the frog. You can carry me on a cushion. Poppy looked at her father pleadingly. "Come on, dear," said the queen. "Don't make Poppy touch that green slimy." Princesses don't break promises," interrupted the king sternly. Poppy took a deep breath, then stretching out her arm, she picked up the frog by one foot. Her sisters gasped. She touched him. Moaned Prince Humperdinck and fainted. Chapter Five: The Frog Prince. Poppy dropped the frog in the darkest, most distant corner of her room before climbing into bed. But Princess Poppy said, "The frog, you promised I could sleep on your silken pillow." Poppy didn't answer. If you don't let me. The frog threatened. "I'll tell your father." "I've had enough!" snapped Poppy. "You're the meanest, ugliest, most horrible frog I've ever met." "What's more," she added, "if you mention my promise one more time, I'll throw you out of the window." "No, you won't," said the frog. "You wouldn't dare. Your promise." I do dare," said Poppy. In a fury, she strode over to the frog, picked him up, and threw him out of her window. There was a long silence, followed by a loud splat. Poppy suddenly realized what she'd done. She was horrified. Frog, say something. I hope I haven't killed him. She prayed and raced down the stairs as fast as her legs could carry her. Outside, the frog was lying sprawled on the palace lawn. Poppy picked him up as gently as she could. "Are you all right?" she whispered. "Yes," croaked the frog, carefully feeling his head. I didn't mean to hurt you," said Poppy. "I'm so sorry." And she bent down and kissed him. There was a loud crash of thunder, followed by a shower of sparks. The frog had vanished. In his place stood a handsome young prince. At last! Shouted the prince. "I'm human again." No more slimy skin, no more webbed feet, no more flies. One by one, the palace windows flew open, and everyone looked out. What's going on? Yelled the king. I'm coming down. What happened to you? Poppy asked the prince. A wicked witch cast an evil spell on me, he said. I could only become human again if a princess kissed me. So it's because of me that you're a prince again," said Poppy, feeling rather proud. "Well, yes," said the prince, "but you did throw me out of the window first." Still," said Poppy, "there aren't many princesses who would kiss a frog." "That's true. How can I make it up to you?" Well, you could marry me," 
Oh my, look at Prince Humperdinck. Excuse me, said Prince Humperdinck, but Poppy is going to marry me. No, I'm not, said Poppy. It hasn't been arranged yet. And Daddy, you did say I could find my own prince. That's true, said the king with a sigh. In that case, said the prince, getting down on one knee, if you promise not to throw me out of the window again, I promise. Princess Poppy, will you marry me? I will, said Poppy, and she did. And if you are still here listening to this story, I'm going to read the last page. The tale of the Frog Prince has been around since the 13th century. It was told by storytellers all over Europe. This version is from the retelling by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm, two brothers who lived in Germany in the early 1800s. By the way, do you see Prince Humperdinck in the background? <laughs>